Well, fine. Good evening, everyone. This is Patricia, and I am traveling for history. I am in Shelburne, Vermont today. In fact, I'm in front of the Shelburne Museum, across from their administrative offices, the yellow building right there. And I wanted to share with you the history of this covered bridge right here. We can only go a little bit inside. We can see that it's barred on both sides. And on this side, this sign says staff only. Um, there we go. What does the rest of that say? Entrance to, uh, oh, like a quarter mile south. All right, so this is the museum covered bridge. Apologize for the traffic, I can't control that. Built in 1845, the U Museum Covered Bridge originally spanned the Lamoille River in Cambridge, Vermont. The trusses for the double bridge were assembled in a field next to the chosen site. Measuring 168 feet, or 51 meters in length, with two vehicle lanes and a footpath attached after its original construction. It is an impressive example of the engineering principles and bridge builders craft practiced during the 19th century. The bridge was lighted by kerosene lamps. I don't know about you, but I don't know if I've ever heard that before, lighted and all that. Uh, during the 1927 flood, the water rose seven feet or 2.1 meters above the floor of the bridge. That was a devastating flood in Vermont back in 27. The bridge replaced a ferry that existed in its place before connecting two neighborhoods of Cambridge. In the late 1940s, Electra Havemeyer Webb of the Shelburne Museum sought to preserve early American life and asked the Vermont Highway Department to help find a bridge worth preserving. When it was learned that the quote-unquote big bridge, as it was known at the time, was to be replaced, this quote-unquote double-barreled bridge with its walkway was too much to resist. The museum dismantled the covered bridge in 1949 and moved it to the museum grounds. The beams still bear the identifying numbers for reconstruction. By situating it above a man-made pond, extensive landscaping integrated the bridge into the grounds. The covered bridge served for many years as the museum's entrance. But when automobile traffic proved too taxing, the museum relocated the entrance and retired the bridge from duty. The current bridge in is, is in, excuse me, the current bridge in its original place is the Wrong Way Bridge on State Route 15. I do know the Wrong Way Bridge. I remember years ago, probably the early 2000s, I was driving over the bridge when um, the Lamoille River was rising. It had risen so much that the uh, water was actually um, pouring over the bridge. And my car, a 1996 Grand Am, a Pontiac Grand Am, uh, was the last to be able to cross the bridge that morning. While many associated covered bridges with New England, the first covered bridges in the United States were built in Pennsylvania. Artist and uh, inventor Charles Wilson Peale received the first patent for a covered bridge in 1797. While his project never came to fruition, Seven years later, the town board of Philadelphia voted to erect what would become the first covered bridge across the Skykill River. It was only enclosed by chance after a shareholder of the building of the bridge protect, protect, excuse me, uh, protected the. Uh, oh, okay. Suggested they be covered. Covering the bridge protected the structure from severe weather and shielded farm animals from frightening views. In 1804, 
Connecticut inventor Theodore Burr engineered his design for an arch truss bridge, also called a king post arch design, and patented it in 1817. Shelburne Museum's covered bridge is an example of Burr's creative engineering. Because inventors received royalties from bridge patents based on a bridge's length, there was great incentive to devise ways of increasing a bridge's possible span, and the frequently used king post design could only extend so far. Burr's design, which bolted a single arched timber to the king post braces, added such stability that not only did the king post trusses become secondary supports, but also the bridge's possible reach greatly increased. And I know you're wondering, I haven't covered a King Post Trust Bridge before, but um, let me tell you, let me tell you what that is. A King Post, whether you uh, spell with two words, one word hyphenated, or just one word, uh, or two words hyphenated, is a central vertical post used in architectural bridge designs working in tension to support a beam below from the truss apex above. A king post extends vertically from a cross beam, the tie beam, to the apex of a triangular truss. The king post itself, in tension, connects the apex of the truss with its base, holding up the tie beam, also in tension, at the base of the truss. The post can be replaced with an iron rod called a king rod or king bolt, and thus a king rod truss. The king post truss is called a Latin, is also called a Latin truss. So let's look at an example of that. Uh, let's see where you. This right here is a king post truss. The king post truss is used for simple roof trusses and short span bridges. It is the simplest form of truss in that it is constructed of the fewest truss members individual lengths of wood or metal. The truss consists of two diagonal members that meet at the apex of the truss, one horizontal beam that serves to tie the bottom end of the diagonals together, and the king post which connects the apex to the horizontal beam below. For a roof truss, the diagonal members are called rafters, and the horizontal member may serve as a ceiling joist. A bridge would require two king post trusses with a driving surface between them. A roof usually uses many side-by-side -side trusses depending upon the size of that structure. King posts were used in timber-framed roof construction in Roman buildings and in medieval architecture in buildings such as parish churches and tithe barns. The oldest surviving roof truss in the world is a king post truss in St. Catherine's Monastery, Egypt, built between 548 and 565. They don't actually give us of that so before uh, that must be an AD. All right, so, and then one more picture here, hopefully to make it easier to understand. This picture right here. I'll have these photographs and whatnot on my website um, so you can, you can uh, look at them as you wish. All right, let's do a walkthrough. It's my mistake, not a walkthrough just to walk up to the uh, barricade. It's nice that there's a light in here though. Okay, so remember when I said that the numbers are still on here from the, um, from the dismantling? Well, there we go right there. That, uh, Looks like a C4 right there. Can we see the King Truss from here though? I don't. Well, we see a triangular piece right here, right? So, over here, metal plate right there. Metal plate. <laughs> Still don't see a, the, the king post truss up there. But maybe if you guys have better eyeballs than I, 
You do. Ooh, mosquitoes are out in droves tonight. Droves. I have to say, there's a. Let's see if I can film this for you. Do you see the grooving there? See how that's. This is up. Comes down. Comes back up. Yeah, it's pretty pretty wild, to be honest. Oh yeah, entrance is a quarter mile south. If you want the uh, actual entrance to the museum, but if you're staff, you have to walk through here, and I've seen staff do that. So, pretty nice for staff. They have um, netting up here. Not sure I can show that to you. Oh yeah, there we go. You see that right there? I'm guessing that's to keep birds out. And here's we see the Burr Arch Truss. Now you've seen that in multiple videos, at least three that I have filmed that are up here in Trinidad County. I'll put links to them in the uh, description below. But uh, amazing, isn't it? Isn't that just beautiful construction? Wow. Anyway, this is Patricia and I am traveling for history. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you do enjoy my videos, please subscribe to my channel, 181 and Growing. Love that. Love that. Thank you so much for um, subscribing. And once you do subscribe, please make sure to click on the notifications bell and you'll be notified each and every time I upload a brand spanking new video just for you. And that's still every day of the week. And today is May 23, 2022. All right. Well, thanks so much for watching. And um, until I see you again, you have a great night. Thanks so much.